Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Trouble Tree. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about the basics of sampling theory in the subject of machine learning. Actually, these basics or these uh, definitions which we are going to learn in this video are not only related to machine learning but in general statistics also. So make sure that you watch the video till the end so that you understand all the definitions. And if you're having your exam schedule nearby, just let me know the date of your exam and your college name in the comment section so that I can make videos by your exam date and also according to your college syllabus. Then, so without any further delay, let's quickly get into the video so in this uh, video simply you're going to learn the definitions of so and so uh, some terminologies which you will be getting later so when you get later you should not get confused okay what what random variable is what estimator is what estimator bias is what is the central limit theorem so you should not get confused so for that reason we are going to learn about all the definitions in this video which are related to sampling and which are related to statistics and machine learning okay and in this video we are going to learn total of 11 definitions okay so let's get started first is random variable so if you are having a subject called as probability and statistics and some my and from my juniors the subject name was changed to something like mathematical something i don't remember actually but you know some probability and statistics kind of things if you have learned then you have will have idea about this random variable so random variable is nothing but it is a name of an experiment with a probabilistic outcome which means Outcut outcome may be anything. It may be of any probability. For example, when you, uh, you know, when you toss a coin, you may get head or you may get tail. So before tossing the coin, you don't know whether you're going to get head or tail, right? Because a coin has both head and tail. So before you toss the coin or before you roll the die, you cannot predict the output, right? So those kind of events will come in, come into the random variables. Random. Uh, you know those kind of um, yeah those kind of events will come into random variable so outcome is not known before the experiment okay done now see here when you uh, you know toss a coin you may get either head or tail right so probability of getting head is what half probability of getting tail is what half right so half is nothing but 0 0.5 so we represent it like this so probability of getting head is 0 0.5 and probability of getting tail is 0 0.5 but we are not sure whether we are going to get head or tail right and the second is the probability distribution so probability distribution for a random variable y p of y is equal to y i that y will take on value y i for each possible so don't get confused I know you have and you did not understand anything out of what I have read now for example let us take you have tossed two coins right when you toss two coins what are the possible outcomes that you get you get four outcomes right you get head 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 tail and tail head and tail tail right so and y represents number of heads so y will represent number of heads let us suppose then how do you calculate p of y less than or equal to 1 here you have equal to symbol so how do you calculate p of y less than or equal to 1 less than or equal to 1 means what it can be 0 or it can be 1 but it cannot be negative values because head number of heads cannot be negative so in this case you're having zero heads right in this case you're having one head in this case again one head in this case you're having two heads but nowhere you're having negative number of heads right so you'll not go to negative values so what is what it becomes probability of y is equal to 0 plus probability of y is equal to 1 like that you will express okay probability of y is equal to 0 means what having zero number of heads so out of these four in how many situations you'll have zero number of heads only here right only here so here what is the probability of this 1 by 4 which is nothing but 0 0.25 so that will be equal to 0 0.25 plus and what is the probability of y is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 means one head so one head you have in two situations here and here in both the situations you are having one head so what would be the probability 2 by 4 which is nothing but 1 by 2 which is nothing but 0 0.5 right so plus 0 0.5 so that is equal to 0 0.75 so the probability of y is less than or equal to 1 is 0 0.75 so that is how you calculate the probability distribution done don't get confused by seeing that, that definition you can you can write whatever you have understood from this definition you can write okay and if you do, do not understand anything from this definition just do the example and come that's all and i'm pretty sure that you would have ex uh, understood the example clearly and the third is the expected value or mean so you know what mean is right you add up all the things and you divide it with number of things so sum of quantities by number of quantities or sum of observations by number of observations a standard definition which we have been learning since our st uh, childhood so here also you do the same thing actually e of y generally mean is represented by e of y and e of y will be equal to sigma yi 
into probability of y is equal to yi. So what is yi here? Random variable. And what is y is equal to yi? The probabilistic distribution. So it is nothing but the product of definition 1 and definition 2. So random variable into its probability distribution. And summation. That is for each and every i value you need to do that. Then you get mean. Okay. Done. So what do you mean by variance then? So variance is nothing but it will show. So what variance will actually show you? Variance will show the dispersion of data from its mean. So from data, the deviation or the dispersion of data, you can understand by variance. Okay. And how do you calculate the variance? Variance of y will be equal to e of y minus mu r whole square. Here, mu r is nothing but what? Mean. So mean is usually represented with mu also right or expected value e of y or mu anything you can represent mean as so mu is nothing but mean and y is nothing but a random variable so y minus mu r whole square is variance okay then how do you calculate the standard deviation we already know what a standard deviation root of variance you'll get the standard deviation we don't have any specific formula for standard deviation actually you need to first calculate the variance and square root of variance will give you the standard deviation okay done and 6 is a binomial distribution again don't get confused on looking at these definitions so binomial definition binomial distribution it will give the probability of observing r heads in a series of n independent coin tosses so if you uh, can remember the binomial theorem or the binomial distribution from the probability and all it will be something like n c r n minus 1 c r plus 1 something like that i don't exactly remember the formula but you'll have something like this right binomial distribution and all so that is what so uh, simply when you have tossed a coin for three times where when you have uh, done yeah when you did did three coin tosses out of that how many two how many heads you get uh, two heads so what is the probability of getting two heads out of three tosses what is the probability of getting three heads out of four tosses so out of n uh, you know n uh, activities you do how much probability of get you have of getting r times the favorable outcome or the outcome okay so that is about the binomial distribution done and the next comes the normal distribution normal distribution is again very easy to remember so you need to um, remember the bell curve so the bell shaped probability distribution that covers many natural values so when you are um, you know plotting all the values so this bell curve this bell shape will cover most of the values. So, so most of the values will be in this range itself. So, right. So the, that is the most commonly occurring values will be in this range itself. So in this range and this range, you will have values which are occurring least commonly. Okay. So which simply says that most of the uh, most occurring values or most commonly occurring values, all of them will be placed at this center part. So yeah, now center limit theorem, again, don't get confused on looking at the definition. Just formal, for, for, for formality, we will refer the definition and I'll explain you clearly with example. Okay. So if you are taking a population which is having mean as mu and standard deviation as sigma and you take large random samples from that population with replacement then the distribution will approximately become normal so once you're considering the po population and that population is having some factors like mu and sigma okay and you take large random samples from that so from this population itself you are picking up large random samples instead of picking few random samples you are picking large then the population with that with replacement then the distribution will approximately become normal simply with example i'll tell you i said no see suppose for example we are having 80 40 60 out of some 100 values we have taken 80 40 60 and you do the average of 80 40 60 so what do you get if you do the average of 80 40 60 that is mean so 80 plus 40 is 120 120 60 180 180 by 3 you'll get 60 so uh, 60 as average you'll get out of this right so instead of taking only three samples from these hundred samples if you're taking 50 samples then what happens the the mean will not be the same 60 right the mean may reduce or the mean may get increased so it depends on the values that you're taking so op, uh, that means so again all the values may come into this part that means all the values may become into a normal distribution instead of being in binomial distribution or any other distribution so when you are considering large number of samples instead of taking few samples then the distribution will automatically be converted into a normal distribution okay done and the ninth definition that we are going to study is about the estimator right so estimator is again simple it is a random variable y it is which is used to estimate some parameters or p some parameter p of an underlying population uh, so some parameter you're observing like you know 
uh, whether the age of the students in the class so y is equal to 50 so this y could be age whose age is equal to 50 or it can be height whose height is equal to 50 centimeters inches some something okay and whose weight is equal to 50 kgs like that some parameter you are estimating some parameter you are observing up from the underlying data okay done so that is the estimator and the next comes the tenth definition which is about the estimation bias now let's see what estimation bias is suppose you're having sample mean mu y and the population mu uh, mean as mu p okay so what estimation bias will be equal to mu y minus mu p that is the sample mean minus population mean you mean you have to do okay for example if mu y minus mu p is equal to zero mu p is equal to zero which means there is no difference between the sample sample mean that and the population you don't have any difference then in that case what happens it is said to be unbiased data since there is no difference your sample mean is equal to exactly is equal to your population mean which means you don't have any uh, difference there so obviously it's unbiased data but if you are having some dis uh, difference uh, instead of zero you're getting one two some differences there then it is said to be biased data okay done what is biased data among the class uh, students among the 60 students you're taking only you're studying only about girls students or you're studying only about boys students that is biased you're studying only about girls you're studying only about boys you're not concentrating on you know if when you are studying only about girls you're not concentrating on boys right so you're showing some bias between girls and boys so that difference you're showing some differences the last okay, definition which we are going to learn in this video is about the confidence interval confidence interval is nothing but the probability p at n percentage that is at 95 percent confidence what is the probability at 5 percent confidence what is the probability at 80 percent confidence what is the probability so at so and so percent confidence that is your 95 percent confident about the data that it is true or 95 percent confident about the data that it is going to be false so whatever your confidence you'll have some uh, charts for that you need not uh, remember anything you'll have the charts they'll be giving it to you in the exam so you need to calculate at so and so you need to find out in the ta in the table form in the tabular form you should see at so and so uh, you know confidence interval what is the probability at so and so confident percentage what is the probability like that you need to calculate okay and simply you can say the area under the normal distribution curve in which data will be you know fall 95 percent of the times for example that, that is, is when you're 95 percent confident about the data then what could be the probability so like that you need to calculate okay so that's all for this video I think some of the definitions may be confusing for you but still I try to make them as simple as I can for your for you so that you can understand it more better and thanks for watching the video till the end and if you're still having any doubts apart from what I've explained in this video feel free to ask me in the comment section I'll definitely try to answer all your doubts for sure and um, if you want me to make any other videos or any other topics just let me know in the comment section I'll definitely try to make it for sure and also if you have not yet subscribed to my channel do subscribe and also hit the bell icon so that you can receive notifications whenever i post a new video and thanks for watching the video till the end